Never as we ought. Welcome to our last midweek Lenten service. Um, we're working through the book of Jonah, and today we're on the last chapter, the last section. God is God of all. So I'm glad you're here today. Uh, I will share my screen and we will begin the service. Let us pray. Walk with us, loving God, as we tread these 40 days of Lent. You proved yourself to be God of all creation. Help us to see you even in those most different from us. In Jesus' name, amen. And our reading today is from Jonah 3, beginning with Jonah 3 and into Jonah 4. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, is, it, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat in it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your servant Jonah, who shows us our own folly sometimes. Thank you for being God of all. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Creator and Jesus the Savior. Amen. And also many animals. Last line of the book of Jonah. Got to be one of my favorite lines in all of scripture. Poor Jonah. He finally does what God has asked. And against all odds, he's even very successful. The whole city of Nineveh repents. Even the animals fasted and repented. Meanwhile, Jonah has pulled up a seat outside of town, popped himself some popcorn, and he's all ready for the fireworks to begin. Sometimes it reminds me of how gleeful some folks were who read those Left Behind books while they were hoping for all the unbelievers to get what was coming to them. 
Ah, but our God is a God of mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And also it seems willing to have a change of plans. So when Jonah's lackluster preaching finally gets some good results, God presses the abort button and cancels the destruction of Nineveh, which really miffed old Jonah. That's the trouble with grace. Sometimes we can say, I want it for me, but do I want it for other people too? Because grace isn't something that we get to only lay claim to. Grace, God's deep and boundless and abundant love is given freely to one and all, even the many animals. In our hardness of heart, sometimes we would like to be stingy, careful, carefully and miserly doling out God's love only to the most deserving, like a dragon clutching hoarded gold. It's a good thing you and I and Jonah aren't God. But this book has a little more to it than that. This little book is trying to broaden our minds and to help us see the whole world as gods. So there is no more us and them. That's just something we humans have made up. It's not how God rolls. This little book of Jonah was written at a time when Israel was cracking down on all the others, those who were not pure blood Hebrews, those who were outsiders, who were Gentiles. Books like Ezra and Nehemiah, which were contemporary of this, were telling people of Israel that God wanted them to be exclusive, to keep themselves apart from those heathen neighbors. Those books were all about Israeli exceptionalism, about how God loved them and only them, and everybody else was subject to God's wrath, God's punishment. And in the face of that extreme nationalism and prejudice, this little book very slyly and even comically makes fun of that view of God shows how the heathen sailors, remember them from the beginning, as well as that whole entire heathen city of Nineveh are not just eligible for God's grace, but in some ways we're more deserving of it than the faithful Hebrew prophet Jonah. This little book pokes fun at that stodgy exclusivism of Israel, and makes the bold claim that God is God of all the world, all the humans, and even all the animals. And then, well, we get to the end of the book where God asks a question, shouldn't I be concerned about all these people and all these animals? Shouldn't I be concerned? And leaves us with that question which then gets flipped, of course, around to us. Shouldn't God be concerned? Where are we going to land? Are we going to come down like Jonah, miserly in our belief that God is for us and us alone? Or are we going to chuckle and shake our heads over our own narrowness and marvel at the vastness and the inclusion of God's love. Can we admit that our God is so big and so deep and so boundless that we know we don't know? We admit that we're unable to contain or even to imagine the expanse of God's mercy. Jonah is a wry challenge for us, especially when we're feeling kind of cranky and judgmental. In those moments of silliness, silliness like Jonah trying to run away from God, silliness like being swallowed by a big fish, silliness like Jonah's reluctance to preach more than just a few words, 
silliness like Jonah being angry at God for God's goodness. In that silliness, we can sometimes find our own hardness of heart exposed and our own silliness and our own selfishness revealed. It's a book that gently and humorously encourages some self-examination and sometimes not in very subtle ways. Can we allow God to be God? Are we willing to say, we are foolish to try to contain God's love and mercy and hoard it only for those who worship like us, who believe like us, who look like us. The book of Jonah is a mirror that shows us our own flaws. But it is also a mirror that we hold up to God and which shows us that God is a God of all creation, merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. The book of Jonah shows us just how amazing grace can actually be. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And let me share my screen. And let us pray. And today, I think we need to add to our prayers, especially all those who have been suffering and affected from the shootings, these last two shootings this last week, both in Atlanta and in Boulder. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For those who do not share our faith, but who are still known to you, we thank you, O oh God, for the awesome power and majesty of your creation. We thank you, O oh God for your love for us, even when we run from you. We thank you, O oh God, for your love and mercy, even when we do not deserve it. We thank you, O oh God, for the many living creatures with whom we share this world. We thank you, O oh God, for those who are sick, homeless, suffering and in despair, and especially today, we pray for the people affected by the mass shootings in Atlanta and in Boulder, victims, families, everyone who has suffered the trauma. For them, we ask, heal them, O oh God. For an end to this pandemic, for the equitable distribution of vaccine throughout the world, Hear our prayer, O oh God. All this and whatever else that you see that we need, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.